Welcome to Co-op Radio 102.7 FM CFRO. This is Monday Brown Bagger. The date is uh, April 13th, 2009. My name is Reginald Angusarku. I have my uh, co-host Tanya Hill in the studio with me today. Uh, before we begin with our first guest, what happened was is so far Monday Brown Bagger, we've had a chance to interview Sakura Sanders from protestbarrack.net. Uh, we've talked to the Western Shoshone Nation about what the Barrack Gold has done on their land. And also, I've had a chance to read the report from the Western Shoshone Nation, which talks about how the transnational, trans-Canadian uh, corporations are uh, tearing that land apart down there and not adhering to first to human rights. So uh, what we're doing is we're going to continue on to talk about the injustices that lead right back to Barrack Gold, right into Peter Monk, who, has, who now has the Order of Canada, right over to Harper... Uh, because uh, Maruni is involved with Barrick Gold and Harper or Maruni is uh, Harper's uh, mentor. And we also have to remember that Peter Monk has the, uh, the ear of uh, Mr. Harper. Also, Barrick Gold being the biggest gold company in the world, you're, you're talking about tremendous amount of control that one company has. Uh, also, uh, we're going to have our guest to talk about uh, how there's an awful lot of uh, mining companies that are registered here in Canada. But with that said, we now have as a guest William Sacker who is the co-author of Noir Canada. Uh, there is a prox- there, he was telling me there's about eight different authors who researched this book. Not only are the authors facing a lawsuit in Quebec because of this book, being, the book being put out, their publisher is also facing the exact same lawsuit. And to me, I find that to be against freedom of speech. With that said, hello, William. Hello. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to come on. And uh, My pleasure. Could you quickly tell our listening audience, you know, uh, you, you put this book out, you, you did tremendous research. Could you talk about the research you did and how you compiled the information? All right. Yeah. Well, first, um, thank you for inviting me on your uh, on your radio. And I uh, I just wanted to apologize uh, um, in front of your uh, audience uh, if I'm making some hesitation sometimes because uh, I'm uh, English is not my, uh, my uh, mother language. So... Anyway, so uh, Noir Canada, um, well, if, which you can uh, you can translate as uh, you know gloomy Canada or black Canada, uh, which subtitle is uh, pillage, corruption, et criminalité en Afrique, which means uh, plundering, uh, criminality, and corruption in Africa. Basically, what we have done with uh, this book, we have uh, started from uh, questioning, and our questioning was that: is this myth of a uh, good guy? that Canada is enjoying uh, pretty much inside and outside uh, its border, is, is that myth uh, founded? Because uh, what, we have, we, what we had noticed before, uh, you know, before um, going through our research is that there were some indices that uh, abroad Canada didn't have uh, the same reputation that actually, um, uh, while I would say usually the, the governmental propaganda is, is selling to uh, Canadian citizens and uh, people uh, around the world. So what we have done is we, we have tried to gather um, documents uh, talking about uh, Canadian interest in, uh, in Africa. We have been uh, concentrated on, on, the, on the, this continent. And what we have uh, uh, collected is many, many numerous uh, documents uh, usually independence documents, which were actually uh, reporting uh, numerous allegations of abuses that um, Canadian private companies um, uh, would have done on, on, the, on, the, on the African continent. So our sources are basically, you know, a United Nations report, uh, big NGO reports such as Amnesty International, Global Witness, uh, Human Rights Watch. We have also based uh, our... Um, our uh, research on the parliamentary commissions, <clears throat> on uh, governmental resor- uh, sources, on academic works, on uh, works of a recognized uh, specialist of Africa, uh, on the international press. So all these uh, sources together, we have uh, basically more than 1,000 uh, references in our book. Uh, and we have um, we have uh, basically gathered many, many types of uh, uh, abuses that uh, private companies uh, have been accused of. It comes from, uh, um, uh, you know, pollution of uh, ecosystem, contamination of ecosystem, and poisoning of population close to mining uh, areas. It 
uh, to corruption, to political ingerence, financial criminality, or even financing of, financing of warlords in the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, which is, uh, you know, a country which have known uh, a civil conflict for about 15 years now. Uh, and it is, it's a conflict that it's usually presented as an ethnic one. But in fact, what we have, we are, what we are observing is that there are a lot, a lot of um, uh, foreign interests um, which are actually um, behind the, um, the, the local uh, powers and um, we are also, you know, uh, we are also talking about uh, massive tax evasions, about uh, brutal expropriations uh, uh, of people who were actually living on areas where where uh, where containing a rich deposit of mineral of oil or oil, you know, like all all these sort of of uh, abuses. So that's that's the that's the 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 the, the, the starting point of of our of our research, and the main point, the key point. Uh, basically, is that we what we have exposed through our analysis is that it exists um, <clears throat> a sort of uh, Canadian uh, exploitation system of natural resources of Africa and I would say other continents such as Latin America, but also uh, anywhere else in in the world. Um, and actually, this system is based on on three components, three main, three main components. The first one is the relative impunity these uh, companies are actually enjoying here uh, in Canada when they are, they are registered here in Canada. The second one is the uh, say the permissive regulations of the Toronto Stock Exchange, which provides a very convenient frame for this company uh, where they are when they are registered at this um, at this uh, stock exchange. And the third one is actually the uh, the support, the multiform support these companies are receiving from the Canadian government. So the uh, whole system is at work, and many, many companies um, from uh, outside Canada are actually using Canada as a platform to uh, to plunder, uh, basically, uh, natural resources from from abroad. So that's why, and I finished on that, that's why... Um, we have we have uh, suggest that somehow Canada is a judicial paradise for uh, mining companies uh, in the world. Well, according to the, uh, I was talking to a lawyer recently, and he was saying, according to the not only the Canadian Constitution but the Bill of Rights, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, even the British North American Act, every single Canadian that lives in Canada that owns thinks that they own a house. Guess what? You don't own that house. The Crown owns everything. So that basically shows if a country is based on the fact that its citizens do not own their own land, then what is done is it just as you're talking about, it's created this atmosphere for the for the corruption to exist. So when can we expect this novel to be available in English so that we're able to read it and also be able to find out more about what's going on that you're reporting about? Um, actually, so far there's no. Um there is no, let's say, um, uh, intention to, um, to 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 pass the, the content of, of the book in, in English. Why? Well, basically, what happened is that uh, we haven't found any uh, English publisher so far. So um, uh, we would be pleased uh, to to hear a proposition from uh, from English speaking publisher, which would actually. Uh, translate our book, but uh, so far we uh, we haven't. So uh, so that's that's uh, that's the point where, where we are. And actually, what happens is that, as you were mentioning, we are uh, involved in uh, two cases of uh, label uh, law, lawsuits. Uh, one in Quebec, um, intended by uh, you know, as you were mentioning, Barry Gold, and a second one in Ontario, um, launched by uh, Banro Corporation, uh, for a total of eleven million dollars. So um, you know, it's uh, they, they are uh, accusing uh, us of uh, defamation. So uh, you know, when you have uh, a book which uh, is loaded by uh, such uh, such uh, uh, in, immense uh, weight, I mean, um, it uh, well, you can imagine that that uh, it dissuades um, uh, people from uh, from being interested in in uh, in translating it or, or publishing it. 